So, <clears throat> anyway, we started working together, and this is one of the first miniatures that Rakesh and I directly collaborated on, and it was called The Danger of Photography. And once again, I was playing with sort of homoerotic themes, autobiography. This is called We Watch the Boys Dive and Swim. Um, it was very necessary to have Rajesh involved in this because to convey my ideas to Rakesh was always a little difficult in the beginning. And Rakesh's background was, I always, in the early days, I always described him as a naive artist. And, but actually, he had quite a bit of training, which I wasn't all that aware of in the early days. And his grand uncle was actually Ram Gopal Vijay Varghia, who is a very well-known miniaturist from the Jaipur area. You want to speak? You want to tell a little bit about your, you can speak in Hindi. Just a little about your, uh, how you learned how to, uh, uh, your painting, how you learned your painting, about your grand uncle's portrait. Can you speak? I, I, I have to say something, I don't know what he's saying in Hindi, I'm afraid. But um, one thing about Rakesh, and it's so true of so many of the people who are working as painters in a place like Udaipur, he, his bread and butter and how he supported himself was he was painting birds. And he painted birds on note cards, and he painted birds and birds and birds and birds and birds and birds. Yes. Right. On birds and birds and birds. He's very good at painting birds. Yeah, he is. I mean, seriously. But he felt he had no creative um, outlet that he could do anything other than that. So he was quite happy when I came to him and started asking him to do things other than this because he knew he had other talents and he wanted to develop them. And I think, you know, when you look at this, some of these early uh, paintings that he did, and then you go to what he's doing now, which we will get to, they're quite amazing. Anyway, these drawings are from a book that is published on his granduncle, uh, Ram Gopal Vijay Varghia. These are some sketches his granduncle had did. And when I look at these sketches, I find them interesting because there's actually something about them that reminds me a little bit about what Rakesh himself does. So anyway, once again, we started, you know, doing I, what I wanted to do basically at this point because I was a little frozen with the photography. I didn't know what to do. I just wanted to document my life in India. And so I was working with Rakesh and, it, you know, simple things, going to the market in a bicycle rickshaw, um, being served tea in the morning at a guest house. Uh, we started very simply. Now, at the time, there were people like this is Sarah Wasim's work. Um, incredible, incredible contemporary miniatures were going on. But I was quite unaware of all of this. And, but now that I'm, I'm happy that you know, I'm part of this, um, I don't know if you want to call it a movement or whatever that was going on. But we were doing things, we were taking some of the early photographs and we were saying, okay, what I want to do is show how is this photo made. I want to show myself in the rice fields. You know, uh, this photograph, which was very popular, uh, view from the monkey temple, um, I wanted to show how this was. And, and this miniature is titled, What is Behind Me? And once again, it's referring to the selectivity of the camera. 
Um, but also at this point I was beginning to feel that the stage of my life where I was shooting on the street with the Nikon and the Rolleiflex was sort of behind me. Um, when my father died in Goa, uh, I had Rakesh paint this miniature which is called I Hold My Father's Bones uh, because we did a ceremony for my dad in Goa after he was cremated and we threw him in the ocean uh, in the Arabian Sea. This is called um, The Fountain. Sometimes I made little plays on this whole concept of coming to India to find spirituality. Um, this is called a lecture in civility, which was a little mocking of myself sometimes when I go on a rant in Udaipur about the way things should be, uh, <laughs> which I do once in a while, everybody knows that. So I'm surrounded by crocodiles and I have uh, castles in the air uh, depicting myself as isolated. And the interesting thing is Rakesh and I work together. Um, the image of me, I mean, it became rather cartoon-like and, you know, there wasn't really an attempt to make me look like me, but uh, he became sort of a representative of not only me, but maybe a lot of foreigners in India and their experiences. And then what we started to do, this is a uh, Francesco Clemente, the Italian artist, had come to India and he had also worked with miniaturists, and so I was beginning to learn these things. And I started to play on some of these things. So this is called A Map of What is Effortless by Clemente. And Rakesh and I made another map of what is effortless. But we used only Indian animals. We didn't use any African animals, unlike Clemente's. And basically, it was like, I was trying to give this impression that photography is hard. You know, I was really having difficulty. I was beginning to think photography was physically hard. It was mentally hard. There's a lot of issues involved in it. And it should be effortless, and maybe, you know, of course, the hand is some sort of god or whatever that's doing things without any effort whatsoever. Uh, this, we've played with Ravi Varma, this image of Saraswati, or Ravi Tara Devi, I think is another incarnation. And um, this is where I needed Rajesh. So, I mean, in this one, I said I wanted to be in this boat. Uh, you know, showing some of the enjoyment that I have in India too. And I said, I want to be in the boat with a very handsome young man with his shirt off and he's playing electric guitar. And what came back to me was sort of this hedra-like character that's very uh, um, unisexual, <coughs> which wasn't exactly what I was imagining. Um, but sometimes the translations were difficult. But I, I, I learned to let go because it was what Rakesh was doing was wonderful. And it was like, if he made little changes that weren't quite within my concept, I, I learned to like go with the flow generally and say, okay, Rakesh is an artist and he's growing as an artist and he can do what we want. Um, this is called Dish, which is a play on the lady with a bowl of fruit. Uh, I see myself as Lakshmi. Uh, this image started in Udaipur. Oh, you know, I sort of got pegged as being rich, and which I don't really feel that I am, but people started coming to my house and saying things like, you know, cha-cha, you know, can you give me a lakh of rupees for my marriage or something like that? And it was like, no. And, uh, you know, eventually I turned to somebody and I said, well, who do you think I am, Lakshmi? You know, that I, money is just gonna fall from my hands. And so we decided to do a uh, miniature on that. <clears throat> uh, okay, so now we're getting back to Rajesh. All these things are sort of happening concurrently, you have to understand. So I was beginning to collect old vintage studio photography and really beginning to think of doing a series of studio photographs because I thought in doing a series of studio photographs I would somehow circumvent this problem and by bringing it inside with a painted backdrop, so there would no longer be any question about whether or not I was trying to document reality in any way, because it would obviously be a constructed set. Um, so, you know, going back to this photograph was a little bit of a guide, and going back to this photograph was a bit of a guide. And this was the very first photograph that I took with a hand-painted backdrop um, at the Chinar Villa studio uh, in Udaipur. Um, and you have to understand that when I did this, I was conceiving the, the series totally in black and white. I was not thinking these were going to be hand-painted. I was thinking this would be a hand-painted series. In fact, I wanted to do chemical process 
but chemical process proved too difficult for me because of inavailability of materials and heat and water impurities and everything. So I switched to digital and I started doing digital prints. And at one point I was working on these and I had a little Epson 2400 that I was making test prints on in Udaipur and Rajesh walked in and he was going to, you know, he came over to do the translation work with Rakesh for one of the miniatures and he saw one of these black and white photographs and he said, Chacha, we can paint the black and white purists and yet Rajesh's entry into my life, he just, um, he opened up a new world of possibilities. He gave these photographs a look that I, I didn't know they could have before. It was a bit of a difficult thing for me to change because some of these like Om looking heavenward I think is a beautiful photograph in black and white. Um, I'm not really sure if I like the colored version, but the majority of them, I found that the hand coloring added so much, it helped give them more of that vintage feel that I always enjoyed so much. Uh, this is called Radisham Dancing, who's a local uh, hedra that we know. Uh, this is called An English Woman and Her Lover. And the other thing is, I started to change the way I printed, because I always like to print in very dark tones. Uh, in school, my teachers would often get on my case about that my photos were too dark. But when I painted for Rajesh, I learned I needed to lighten the photos so that he could paint them. Uh, and also I started to think, you know, when you're as a photographer and you're shooting a color photograph, you're thinking in color. And when you're shooting a black and white photo, you're oftentimes you're thinking in black and white. And now I was suddenly thinking in hand painting. So this photograph of me knew. Uh, who's the wife of an artist friend, Shahid Parvez, in uh, Udaipur, uh, when I took the photograph, I was already thinking, well, how is this going to look when it's hand-painted? And it ended up like this. Uh, Rajesh did a beautiful job. And this is a photograph of him painting. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about your grandfather? This is some of uh, Rajesh's grandfather's work. My grandfather was... Uh the photographer for the last king of Udaipur, Maharana Bhopal Singh Ji. And uh, he had been doing in his life only the photography and painting work. And it come to my father, and then from my father it come to me. And he was painting the photograph of the local people also. And there you can see this is the one of the businessmen and he painted he has, he has a lot of, uh, his photographs are actually in the City Palace Museum also, and we have a hard time getting a hold of samples to show people actually, because they're part of the Maharana's collection. But we understand in the future they're going to have an exhibition. You want to talk about this one? This one, uh, it's a very, uh, it, it was a photograph of the uh, time of uh, profession. They make it on the festival of Gangor. And uh, he painted uh, this photograph completely. It was, it was looking more like a painting because that time they used to use oil colors and it, the idea was to hide the photograph and to give a look as a painting. Right, and I think your grandfather was sort of famous for doing crowd yes. scenes, right? He was, famous for, he was famous for crowd scenes. This is another one, this is Amba Mata Temple. temple. It's a Durga temple and this is a goat circuit sacrifice, I yeah. think, right? There you can see the cutting of buffalo. Uh, if you look closely, yeah. you can see the, uh, the goat sacrifice here. But this is in the collection of the City Palace Museum. This one's beautiful. This is of Bhopal Singh himself in the courtyard. I think this is one of his best. Unfortunately, it's not very high resolution, but it's very beautiful. Do you know who this is? It's uh, Father Sinji, Father of Bhopal Sinji. Okay. So anyway, Rajesh also started to help me in uh, making the backdrops for the work in the studio. So we went back to some of my old photographs from the India Poem series, which is like this one, which is called Small Shiva Temple Outside of Udaipur. And it worked its way into this backdrop, which is called Card Players. Um, Here's another one. This is called The Entrances to Homes, Pushkar. Uh, once again, sort of a study in light and shade and architecture, but it worked its way, if you look closely, into this backdrop called The Ironing Lady, 
so these were the photographs now happening in my studio. And what I learned is that one backdrop could give me many different um, effects. So I mean, here I do the ironing lady, and I, here I do the assistant, and I get in quite close to him. And the backdrop has a totally different look, or here I uh, step away a little bit more, show more of the backdrop, and we have road workers, this is called. And these women were actually working on the road outside of my house. We called them in to photograph them. Uh, the vast majority of people that we photograph, um, they're real people. They're real people who we either meet in daily life, talk to. Um, once in a while we scoop somebody off the street, you know, due to their particular look. But generally we get to know them a little bit, always have chai with them. This photograph worked its way into this backdrop. This is called Looking for Rain. And Rakesh is at the same time, he's keeping up with us, so now he's doing a miniature painting called Backdrop, um, showing us shooting in the studio. And, you know, once again, creating this illusion um, between what is real and what is unreal, and it gives you an idea of how our studio setup actually works. Uh, and then the, the backdrops we were using in the studio, I feel, started to creep into the way we were creating the miniatures. So this is called In the Land of Lotus Fantasy, and it's a homage to A. Ramachandran, but it almost looks like we're placed against the backdrop and we're sort of floating in this backdrop. Uh, me, this is supposed to be me with my camera, obsessed with my camera. Thomas with the young man at his side. Um, this was uh, the press conference, and I think I'm, I'm going back to feelings of persecution from when I was showing my India Poem series, maybe a little bit, and talking to a lot of reporters. But if you look at this closely, it, once again, it has the feeling of a backdrop uh, hung. It almost seems like something we could shoot in the studio as a photograph. And then we started playing more with uh, doing homages to various Indian artists. So this is called The Shame of the Tourist, and it's the tourist chained to his Lonely Planet guidebook. Um, it's a homage to Anju Dodia, and I mean, I, I have to give so much credit to Rakesh, because, you know, if you go back to those first miniatures he was doing, and now all of a sudden he's doing something that people look at and they, they recognize it as a homage to Anju Dodia, and, and doing this wash background in the back, I mean, it's quite amazing. He started learning things he never knew he could do, uh, this is also a homage to Anju, it's called Barge. And, you know, a lot of what I play on is this whole idea of the Western tourists coming to India and being, you know, attached to their lonely planet and attached to their plastic mineral water bottle, like I am tonight. Um, being a bit of an outsider. This is called The Discoverer, it's a, a homage to Surrender Nair. Uh, this was a homage to B.J. Sharma. Now, at this point, I was already preparing for exhibitions, and oh, we were also advertising the book. So this is called, I write out a check for a full-page ad, and you can see I have the ICICI checkbook in hand, and there's a copy of Gallery and a copy of Art India there in the background. <laughs> so we, we just started documenting everything that happened in my life. This was a homage to AGVN. It's called The Dilemma. Um, here, once again, this is a homage to Rabin Mondal, and, you know, possibly the tourists coming into the little shabby guest house and finding a, a gecko, a chipkali, on the bed and screaming. And this is, you know, based on a Mondal uh, painting, which I, I think is called The Scream, if I remember right. And then we also did larger ones, which are sort of a play on, this is called The Five Star Experience. And, you look closely at this one, you know, here is the tourist um, paying a lot of money to sit in, let's say, maybe the Uday Villas in Udaipur, watching the woman with pots on her head dancing, and then right behind there's people pissing on the wall, and uh, the cows are pissing, and the woman's taking the water, and the water bottle's in the lake, of course, and the fish that's free from the lake is the same fish that's laying on the table, and know, things like this. Um, the woman dancing with the pots on her head and the woman who's really at work with the pots gathering water for the home. Uh, this is a homage to Lalu Prasad Shah. It's called The Specimen. Um, and, you know, through all of this uh, 
I don't know if you want to call it a career, but all of these adventures I've had in India with art um, and, and living here for 10 years, sometimes feeling like a specimen. Um, this is called The Black Lake. This is in a collection in Amsterdam. I think this is one of Rakesh's more beautiful miniatures. I think it's just gorgeous. I should talk a little bit about the border painter. His name is Shankar Kumawat, and he does all this intricate, intricate work. Um, he didn't join us tonight, but you know, Shankar's another one. Without Shankar, these couldn't evolve. Called the Dry Lake. I like to make comments on ecology. And sometimes there's dual messages going on. So in this one, you know, maybe I'm talking about water drying up and, and the problems with uh, global warming and the loss of drinking water and the groundwater. But then there's also a feeling that I'm just enjoying this beautiful night where you can lay on a dry lake and look up at the sky. So some of these offer mixed messages, but that's what I like to do sometimes. This is called transcendence. Uh, and if you look closely, I'm sort of transcending with these lotus blossoms into the sky, but there's also pollutants coming into the lake through these pipes. This is called the accusation. Um, this was going back to experiences in Goa between, you know, who is responsible for destroying the Goan environment? Is it the tourists who come or is it the local uh, people who are greedy and turning everything into a uh, guest house along the beach? Uh, Pani, or the different ways of drinking. And we have the Indian man drinking from the matka, the lota, and me drinking, sucking rather, from the water bottle. Uh, uh, this is called a picturesque view, and I'm going back to this whole thing about, you know, what do I find to photograph? You know, what is reality, and where does the camera actually aim? Uh, eclipse. I'll flip through some of these rather quickly. I think we're having time problems. I want to leave uh, time open for talk. This is called Edge Line. This was done shortly after my partner Tommy had a stroke. We were a little concerned with life and death issues, but you know, so you could interpret it on that level, but you could also interpret it on the level of uh, global warming or ecology again, also. And then these are some of the photographs, and this is the colonel who owns my studio, the colonel and his wife, Manju, and purposely made her quite large in this photo because she really is the dominant figure in the household. Um, this is Debbie. And you know, this is where I started. I mean, I went there and I really wanted to sort of rectify some of those things in India poems about not showing the Indian middle class. And so I, I went, and I, initially I, this is really where the, the um, project was going to go, but it changed. I mean, this might be more typically Orientalist. Um, and pretty soon we started recreating reality in some way, even though people might have been still posing in a very formal way. But then we started to just really like, well, let's show people doing what they normally do. And, and we started to judge photos by how natural they looked. So it's like, this is called, um, Ganpat, help me, what's the name of this man? Outside temple. No, 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 what's the name of the man? His name is Bhagavan. Baluram? Baluram. Baluram before the temple, yes, Baluram before the temple. Uh, and he really does. This, these are exactly the things he sells in front of the temple in Udaipur. Uh, this is Ganpat, who I was just talking to. Ganpat is a village man. There's a whole story about him in the book. I was also working with some tribal artists who were doing, you know, Ramdev Mina was one and Chimandangi, and they were doing uh, this kind of uh, painting. And then, you know, if you look back, so, you know, here's a candid in Kerala, of, it's called Reading the News, and now we have Hindu Reading. Um, this is the shopkeeper, one of our more elaborate shots, the ladder man. Um, and this is called the Merchwala. I, many people think this is a woman, but this is actually a man. He's an old hedra. He uh, sells merch at the side of the road in his old age in Udaipur. Uh, the Matkawali. Back from market, this is my barber Manuj and his wife Devia. Mm, Tara has played, this man played a very big role in this. He was a rickshaw wall and he found so many models for me and he was so, so helpful in doing so much of this work. There's a lot of him in the book. Oh, at a certain point we had to move outside because things were just getting too large, so we started hanging canvas backdrops in our garden, and uh, 
attracted a lot of attention from the neighbors because we started doing this kind of photograph and you know it was on view it's like everybody could see what we were doing so we had a lot of prying eyes but I got used to uh, making photographs with people behind me watching me which I normally don't feel comfortable with that but I had something I had to learn how to do it's called the Chara Tela Walla um, daily work This is Ganpat again, but this is called the Village Barber. Uh, then there was another direction, not only were we recreating reality, but also we went from these very formal studio portraits to sort of fantasy. This is my partner Tommy dressed up in a dhoti, and he came down and posed with uh, Gordy Lal, who we had photographed previously. <clears throat> uh, this is a man who lives in Udaipur near Piers, and you know, we started just sort of like, it's amazing because sometimes the models started to interrelate also and the models started like creating their own photographs. So it wasn't always me making the control. This is Rajesh's father and mother actually in this photo. It's called a local photographer and his wife. Your mother's name is? Manju. Manju also, yeah, okay. Um, this was a man, his name was, uh, he was a skian of the Cartier family in Paris, but he came to Udaipur every year, and he just liked to like, play Maharaja really a lot, and he came over, he wanted a photograph of himself as the Maharaja, and then after this was done, then uh, he needed a Maharani, so he convinced me to get dressed up in a sari and everything, and to become the Maharani, so we have the Maharaja and the Maharani. So, you know, the point I'm trying to make is we just started to have fun with this, and another thing, I'm just going to click off of this for a second. Um, how do I do this? Um, you know, shooting digital, when I was shooting with a Rolleiflex, I had 12 chances to get a good shot because you only have 12 uh, shots on a roll of film. But when I started doing digital, I could just like, you know, I could shoot 100 shots. You know how that is. You all have digital cameras, I'm sure. So when we did that one, which I just showed you, um, I think it was Tara was actually clicking the button on that. I had set up the frame with the tripod, but um, not only did we do that, later I went back, and I'm just going to show this as a real brief little thing, but, uh oh, I may not show this one. Oh, sorry, I can't do it. It was, it was a short little video I was going to show of, of taking that photograph. But anyway, we started playing more and more with fantasy. Um, Venu at the mirror. Uh, Vinu was a bicycle repairman who had polio who couldn't stand up straight, but he was very vain. So it seemed only right to pose him at the mirror. And then we started doing these little tableaus. This is called a rendezvous in the forest with a local foreigner named Yarka, um, who's an actress. And uh, we started constructing these little tableaus. These are two collector friends of mine from Amsterdam, Patrick and Marishka. And they posed as the tourists, complete with the water bottles and the lonely planet and looking lost. Um, the young businessman, my friend Chirag, who is a young businessman, uh, posed for this. Uh, this one, which is uh, a young boy smoking a pipe, it's called Stealing a Smoke. But I mean, this wasn't my idea at all. We had a Mewari family over and I was photographing them and they were insistent that I take a photograph of this young boy smoking a pipe. And like, I had no idea why that was important to them, but it was. They thought it would be a good photo, so I, I made the photograph. Um, so anyway, more and more fantasy involved. Um, this is called Tribal Dreams. And then this all led into new myths. I'm going to try to conclude this because it's like almost 8 o'clock according to my computer and I want to leave time for questions. We went into new myths and new myths we're like totally now out of representing reality and we're starting to represent more, we're using mythological or religious themes, in this case, you know, the Krishna image, and we're using that to deal with male sexuality and um, how young male adolescents perceive themselves in Rajasthan. Uh, Amrita actually looked a very, uh, wrote a very good essay about this which if we had more time I would read you, um, about how the, the story of Krishna lends all sorts of uh, uh, 
permissions to young Rajasthani males. You know, there's there's the old saying, you know, he's a Ram in the household and a Krishna on the street. And holds very true in uh, Udaipur. So, and I also started playing more with digital in in uh, in these this series. I, I you know in the old days I it was like well I won't do anything digital that I couldn't do in a dark room. And now I'm beginning to expand that and do all sorts of things that. I never thought I would have been doing 10 years ago. We're also beginning to show the edges of the photographs a little bit. So in many of the photographs you see trees and it's actually one of my assistants holding a branch into the side to give the effect of a tree. So I decided, well, let's start showing the edges a little bit to once again um, let people know that this is not necessarily reality. Um, but everything continues. So I mean, here the studio in Rajasthan continues, and but we're going more into group shots. Um, this is called New News at the Chai Shop. This is called Farm Boys. Uh, the Picnic, which I think is the one they used on the invite for this show. The miniatures continue. I'm just going to flip through these very, very fast. This is my homage to Amrita Shurgil. It's called The Other Brahmacharis. And this one I really love. This is called uh, Night of the Sadhus, and it's a homage to Manji Bawa. And we did this after I went out and smoked some ganja with some sadhus outside of Udaipur. Um, and we worked Bawa into this, his self-portrait, and some of his figures. And uh, basically, they're the hallucinations in the jungle. And this one was actually to be on display during the run of this uh, talk at the Prince of Wales Museum at an exhibition, but it's been postponed until August. This is Rakesh's latest piece, and it's a suite of seven photographs. Uh, this is called Lost, and we have me and Tommy again. But in this one, we're sort of going our separate directions. And Tommy is finding his way. He's, you know, everybody's pointing in a wrong direction here. Uh, but he finally finds somebody who leads him and leads him to the beach. And this is a reference to Tommy and I have become a little geographically incompatible because he loves the beach. He spends a lot of time in Goa. Now he's spending a lot of time in Thailand, whereas I went the other way and I go this way, feeling very lost and alone. And rather than a kingfisher, I have a vulture. <laughs> and then I end up in the desert. I end up in Udaipur. <laughs> so, um, this is the work, and I think I've probably talked too much. I'm sorry, I really um, ran through these things very quick at the end. Just two more things, um, or three or four more things. This is a new series. This is new myth second incarnation, and we're using Hanuman as a guide this time. And it's more of the aggressive masculine uh, side of uh, uh, masculinity of, of the male ego. And some of these are unpainted, but they give you an idea of some directions that we're going now. And in these, you know, you have to notice Rakesh is painting the tails, and so Rajesh is doing the hand painting, and Rakesh is painting the tails, just as in the other ones, Rakesh was painting the feathers. Uh, when we're doing some quite large group scenes like this. When this is done, it'll be hand-colored, and all of these figures will have tails, because it's basically Hanuman and his army. And this is the very last one I did in Udaipur, and this is called The Evil Orientalist. And I'm going back to the Pushpamala criticisms a little bit in this one. So I think we should conclude with this and open it up to questions. Is that okay? Because I think we're running out of time. It's after 8 o'clock already. So are there questions? Where do we want to start? Uh, 
how do I do it physically, or, or are you saying it's impossible to do? Physically. Well, we're using the hand-painted backdrops, and then we're using a lot of things. I mean, we bring in earth, we bring in soil, we bring in rocks, uh, we bring in trees, uh, shrubbery. I mean, Don popped, and uh, my assistants actually brought a big um, log, which they found floating in the lake. It was part of a date palm, and they brought it to the studio, and we squeezed it through the door uh, to make a photograph. So. Um, Various things we've been doing with that. It's like uh, making a color show in a Hollywood. Um, but do it's cheaper? It's uh, easier to go on location, as it were. Um, well, I just started to have this real fascination with the studio. What is the possibility in the studio? And I think because of some of the earlier criticism, I, which I was quite sensitive to, that I just felt that by doing studio shots, there would no longer be this question about are you the foreigner who are coming to India and doing some sort of, you know, representing our reality in a negative way uh, or in a, not in an inclusive way. I knew the direction I wanted to go. I knew that I did not want to be um, uh, photographing the metro in Delhi. You know, I, I didn't want to do that, but um, but I was getting pushed in that direction because people said, well, you're only focusing on what is rural or what is nostalgic. Um, and I thought by doing the studio, it, it sort of sends a very strong signal. As soon as somebody sees this, they know this is, this is not reality. This is a construct. Um, so it just became a decision on my part um, what to do. I have to say you can ask questions in Hindi too. You should ask some questions of these guys because they have to work with me. So that's why they're here. I think most of the Indian viewers, they, they like to see reality around with this artificial makeup in the studio. I've had very positive reactions to this work. so. That I mean, I can't comment on that. I haven't done a survey. I don't know. I don't know. Anything else? Come on, we came all the way from Udaipur. You have to ask us some questions. I was curious about the uh, your growing involvement about uh, in contemporary India. Uh, uh, of course, you placed yourself vis-a-vis -vis the artist, but then there were uh, Rajesh and Rakesh placing themselves with vis-a-vis -vis you, okay. and then like Rakesh reinterpreted people like A. Ramchandran and uh, Anju and who else like uh, right now uh, the Prashant. Um, when I first came, you know, started spending a lot of time in India, which I would say started in 1999, I wasn't very aware of Indian art at all. But through, you know, spending time here, of course, I, I'm an artist, I love art, so, you know, you start paying attention to what is there. And I was here before the boom, I lived through the boom, I'm here after the boom in Indian art, and I watched it rise and I watched it fall, and I'm watching it go wherever it goes now, which I hope is a good place. Um, I became very aware of Indian artists, so it, it became only natural to want to use some of those images in what we were doing. And I think through the process, I think Rakesh also got an education. I mean, just today he went to the NGMA, not with me on his own. And, uh, you know, he said, well, I saw some paintings there by Andrew Dodia that are on display, you know. I saw uh, a work by Anna Um So, I mean, all of our consciousnesses have grown through this project tremendously. You know, it hasn't just been me, it hasn't just been them. Um, I mean, I think his painting has improved incredibly in, in what he's able to do. And I think those samples, those homages to Andrew Dodia are really prime examples. Uh, and that Manji Bawa also, I mean, the fact that he can paint some a miniature that, that captures an element of Bawa, I think, is quite amazing. Um, if that answers your Abhijit. Yes? Uh, I'm just 
मुझे आपसे ये पूछना था कि आप ये जो पेंटिंग करते हैं ये फोटो के ऊपर करते हैं फोटो के ऊपर आप कलरिंग करते हैं तो जो आप करते हैं वो अलग एक पूरी पेंटिंग करते हैं वो अलग है तो तो उनका वो फोटोग्राफ के साथ क्या संबंध उनका ये है कि कभी फोटोग्राफ में कोई जैसे कि पूंछ बना दी या कृष्ण के ऊपर जो पिको फेदर बना दिया तो उसको राकेश जी बनाते हैं उसका एक अलग डिफरेंट डिटेल्स आती है वो बिल्कुल मिनिचर वैसे बनता है वो मिनिच पर वो फोटो के ऊपर फोटो के ऊपर हां वही जी हां तो वो जब मतलब कि वो आप आप क्या आप जैसे एक्रेलिक कलर्स वगैरह ये यूज करते हैं जी नहीं वो हम जैसे उन कलर को जो पाउडर्स में आते हैं जो मार्केट में अवेलेबल होते हैं उनको क्या है कि स्पेशली एक ट्रेडिशनल वे से टेस्ट करते हैं टेस्ट करके उन कलर को तैयार करने के बाद फिर उसको हम उसको बनाते यूज करते हैं there is something that I didn't mention either. We were going to talk about, you know, elements of collaboration, but um, when we started this series, it was like, well, how are we going to credit these? And um, with the, the photographs, Rajesh and I talked, and he's very easy to talk to, and we said, well, I want to give you some credit for these, but basically I still feel I'm the photographer and, you know, I'm basically the director of the project. And so we decided on the photographs that I would sign the front of each photograph, but that he would sign the back as the hand colorist. So each photograph is signed and numbered by me on the front, and it's signed by Roger Sony on the back. But with the miniature paintings, we actually reverse that because my drawing skills are horrible. And I mean, really, what I give Rakesh to work with, I, I give him little stick drawings, you know. I mean, here's Chacha with his hat on, and I mean, they look like grade school drawings. I mean, they're, they're not good. And uh, he comes back with me a, with a finished sketch, which I actually have, if I can get this. He comes back with a finished sketch like this, you know. And he says, Chacha, is this what you are thinking of? And I say, yes, you know. Now this one took a little bit of back and forth because I had given him something to do he hadn't done before and that was this whole thing of having something very close with the bird and the tree. And he had a little trouble with getting that concept and that perspective, but he did it. And, uh, and then I give him the okay to paint. So anyway, when he's done with a painting, I don't feel I can sign the front of these because I don't have the talent to make these, I know that. So he, Rakesh, signs the front of these RVJ, and I emboss my initials very so you can hardly see it uh, on the side, and then I sign the back on the miniatures. So we reverse so the So basically, he, he does the miniature painting, and in those ones, there's no photography of yours involved. No, there's no photography that's, involved that's in the miniatures. Work, right? That's his, that's, Just that's. That you give him the concept. I give him the concept, right, right, right. Oh. Hello? you give him the concept but uh, it, it sometimes uh, it must have happened that he must have come with his own ideas which you have approved mm -hmm. so do you see him growing as an artist and he is coming up with different ideas rather than you telling him some ideas um, it happened? he comes back I don't know if he comes up with his own ideas completely but many times he takes my ideas and he comes back and he says, Cha-Cha, you want this character on the right side and it will not look good there composition-wise. He says this character should be on the left and you have him facing the wrong way. And sometimes he will come and he will actually come with like maybe three little sketches and say, Cha-Cha, you said it should be like this, but I think it could be like this or like this and I think this is better. So he comes back with his own suggestions, and many times I take them. And sometimes I rely on Rajesh also, because he's always there helping us communicate. So sometimes I, I listen to what he has to say, too. I say, well, do you think he's right about this? So it does become a bit of a, a group effort. Um, and I always compare this whole project to being a film director. I don't know what I, I think we have a, somebody who works in film in the audience here. but. Um, that's the way I feel. I mean, you know, a film director, they roll the credits at the end and they show everybody who's done work in that film from the grips, you know, to the cinematographer. Um, 
and everybody in between. And uh, so many contemporary artists, they don't do that. There's so many contemporary artists who are working with all sorts of assistants and other artists and technicians, and they don't credit them at all. And um, I felt I had to. But, but then you have to draw lines, you know. I mean, I'm not going to have the person who's painting the backdrop sign the back of the photo. Um, because they approach their work as a craftsman, you know, it's just like, okay, give us a, give us, give us a photo and we'll copy it. You know, that's, that's sort of the attitude. Um, so I don't really want to credit them as artists because they're not so involved in the project. Whereas somebody like Rakesh is deeply involved in the project and, you know, he, he has a very much of a pride in what he does. Uh, when he sees these finished miniatures, especially after they get in a frame, I mean, his eyes just pop open and he says, oh, Cha-Cha, I can't believe I painted this, you know, he, he's, he's, you know, and so I'm so happy for him the way he's grown and that he's getting this exposure that, you know, he went to the show that we had in Cochin, he's been to Mumbai, he's here now, I mean, in Delhi. Um, and Rajesh too, I mean, he puts so much sensitivity into the coloring and he's so involved in the project from beginning to the end, I can only credit him as another artist uh, who's working on this. But no, am I going to credit the guy who brings the, uh, the stones to the studio or the plants to the studio? No, I mean, you know, at a certain point it becomes sort of ridiculous. But.